Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and I'd like to welcome you to Vlog 18, Note Taking During a PhD. A PhD is extraordinary. A PhD is distinctive really for one reason. A PhD is an original contribution to knowledge. Yet this extraordinary achievement is often based on and built on a series of quite rudimentary tasks, rudimentary competencies. The challenge for PhD students though is although many of these skills and competencies seem quite straightforward, if you feel you are lacking those skills it creates a bit of fear and a bit of stress. And so this week Libby asked if I would talk through how to create notes and high quality note taking during a doctoral program and it's my absolute pleasure to do so. This is a really great and interesting topic so Libby thank you for the great suggestion. Because great research and indeed great researchers are based on outstanding note taking. For example I have hundreds, hundreds of files of notes that exist on my computer that I've migrated from computer to computer to computer. I have every single note from every single article and book that I've read since 1991. I have tens of thousands of pages of notes and this has a great advantage because it means that every paper, every book, every speech, every talk that I write I already have a file with hundreds and often thousands of pages of notes so it provides for me an outstanding framework, an outstanding platform on which to write new and innovative ideas. So for example right now I am writing a talk and an article on zombie leadership. Yes zombie leadership, I love zombies, can't help it, sorry, but zombie leadership and so I have hundreds of pages of notes on zombies, yes I do, I have thousands of pages of notes on leadership and tens of thousands of pages of notes on higher education and higher education studies. So when I write this new talk and which will become an article I have already this outstanding series of ideas that I can bring together and bring forward to new work. But of course every research project and indeed every researcher begins their project with a niche or a cluster of expertise. So don't think about tens of thousands of pages of notes, that'll come. What I want you to think about as a PhD student is building up a cluster of expertise that is based on a cluster of outstanding notes, outstanding files on your computer that start to capture and embody your expertise. So I understand that there is a lot of worrying at the moment in doctoral education about note taking and I do know where that comes from because I've seen what's been happening to undergraduate education in the last decade or so. What's happening in undergraduate education is a very large minority of students are moving through the entire semester without taking any notes of any kind. What's happening is students are replacing the independent reading of articles and scholarly monographs with the reading of a teacher prepared PowerPoint presentation. So it's very odd these days when I'm delivering an undergraduate lecture and all of a sudden sort of halfway through the lecture I see something odd happening amongst the students. What happens is like a periscope a mobile phone starts to rise up a photograph is taken and it comes down once more. That supposedly is the new way of taking notes. So there's only really two possible readings of what students are doing in terms of not taking notes and occasionally photographing slides. Firstly we can say well our undergraduate students are too lazy to take notes and I don't believe that. I think laziness is a bit of a cop out. But what is worrying me more is that students are so underconfident that they're frightened that they're going to miss out on something. And tragically that something seems to be teacher prepared slides not their own independent reading. So the question then becomes what happens when these undergraduate students enter a doctoral program? 
Now this research on this transition is very much undercooked at the moment, but it is very important I think that we confront this issue and we talk through this issue, firstly for our brand new students who are about to arrive in our mid-session entry in a couple of weeks, but also for our very experienced guys and gals out there. Let's do this vlog this week as a checklist, as a diagnostic for you to think through, mm, am I writing the best notes I can to prepare myself for a great doctorate, but also a great research future? So I've got 10 little diagnostics for you to think about. So let's do this. I'm calling it, if you like, Tara's 10 quick and dirty tips to take notes. So let's go with tip one. Don't confuse taking notes with highlighting photocopies. You know with a highlighter? Mm -hmm. So in 2009, I asked my then coursework master students to come in and see me and have a chat about how they were doing their reading and their research. What was being presented through their assignments at that point was sort of okay. They were okay assignments, but they were deeply fragmented. So there was a paragraph that was fine, but then there was a jump to another paragraph that had nothing to do with the previous paragraph. So the assignments at coursework master's level were incredibly fragmented. So I brought the students in and I said, right guys, show me your notes. Let me just diagnose what's going on here. Just show me the notes that you used to prepare this assignment. Pause. Confusion. Shaking head. Because those students had no notes to show me. They simply pulled out of their bag a series of photocopied articles and book chapters that had a bit of highlighting on them and a few notes scrawled on the side of the photocopies. So this is a real problem because that is not note taking. Without notes, you remain wedded, I think, to the original article and to the original book and to original ideas. So it stops you from actually developing and arcing beyond the original ideas and into your own interpretation. So that creates a deeply fragmented chapter or article or assignment. Two, really important one. I recommend that you separate the writing of your notes from the platform on which you are conducting your reading. This is a big one. So this means what I'm suggesting is you take your notes on a platform that's separate from the article or the book that you are reading. And the reason I'm recommending that sort of platform management is it forces you to make a decision about what is important. So what it's doing is it's separating your intention for the material through your notes from the original intention of the researcher. So for example, if you're doing a lot of digital reading, you don't use paper, I'm the same, then what I recommend is put the article on your iPad and then take notes on your computer. So always remember, platform management is a way to enact information management. It improves how you take your notes. Three, ensure that every topic or every subject that interests you has a separate file on your computer. So organize your notes by subject, not by author, and not by date. This means that over time, you are going to have an incredible database of hundreds and perhaps thousands of pages of notes on different topics. The value of these notes is really incalculable in the long-term sense of your career. It may be sort of a bit messy and a bit embarrassing at the start, but trust me on this one, it'll have incredible benefits in the long term. So you'll start off with only three pages of notes on zombies, but over time you'll have hundreds of pages on zombies. You know what I'm saying. Four, really important one, ensure that your references are accurately logged. This is going to save you time later. Now I know this one seems like an incredibly self-evident truth, like write your references down correctly team, but trust me, I see so many students, hundreds of PhD students, that lose the will to live at the end of their candidature when they have to spend two months checking and filling in the references that they forgot to record accurately. So take the time, record them once, record them properly and save 
save yourself two months at the end of your candidature. Five, ensure that you type your notes accurately. Legibility matters because legibility gives you longevity. Let me explain. What I'd advise is take time to make sure your notes are actually in pretty good nick because the point of note taking is you are presenting research to your future self. Yes, they're important to you now and to what you're doing in the PhD, but if you can really make notes excellent and superb and interesting, you are also future-proofing your future career. Six, oh, important one. Write down the argument that's being presented in the article or the book in one sentence. Important. The key challenge in note-taking, and indeed the point of note-taking, is to reduce the length of the original research and present it in a way that you can use for your scholarship. That's the point of note-taking. Remember, it's meant to be short. Your notes are meant to be short. They're meant to be succinct. The best way to do this, and this is the technique I always recommend when I'm trying to teach people paraphrasing, right? What I recommend when you're writing that single sentence about what this article or this book is about is read the introduction, read the conclusion, read the abstract. So intro, outro, abstract. Read them, take a breath, don't look at it and write one sentence down about why this research matters. Write one sentence about why this research matters. Then write me another one. And that second sentence is how that research is going to be useful to you. Those two sentences are the foundation of outstanding note taking. Remember, these are your notes put your interpretation into them. Seventh, oh yeah, when reading articles or conference papers, proceedings or books, look at the bibliography or reference list first and use that bibliography reference list to evaluate the calibre of the scholarship. A crucial technique of information literacy that is rarely taught these days is asking you guys as students to assess the calibre and the quality of the reference list of the scholars you are reading. Those of you that have followed me on this blog journey know that in an earlier blog I told you that when an examiner is examining your PhD the first thing they do is they turn to your reference list or to your bibliography. Now what I'm recommending today for you guys in note taking is you do the same thing. So turn first to the reference list bibliography of the article you are reading and I want you to assess it. Assess if this scholar is actually a high quality scholar if they're using high quality scholarship. So how are you going to check quality? Well there's lots of ways to check quality. Firstly look at the bibliography in terms of refereeing. What sort of journals and books have they deployed? Are those resources refereed? Secondly, my personal favourite, is this person obsessed by self-citation? You know these people that like, I'm the only person, like I'm a world expert in this, so in the 20 sources that I'm using, 15 of them are going to be for me because I'm so tremendous. You know the self-citation people, right, so maybe that article isn't terribly useful to you. Also make sure that they're mixing analogue and digital sources, so there's some sense of modernity and multi-modality being deployed by the scholar. So remember, don't believe the researcher. Don't believe the author if you don't believe their sources. I want you to check and verify the calibre of the sources that are being deployed and that will help you interpret and shape what is going on in terms of your research. Eight, important one, copy down your quotations accurately. And I want you to carefully differentiate between your interpretation, paraphrasing, and quotations. 
so many students, including PhD students, get into real problems here. So let's break this one down. So once you've determined the quality of the article that you are reading and the quality of the references, let's now talk about the quotations. Now I'm going to do a special and a specialist vlog for you on paraphrasing, plagiarism and quotations because that's quite a, a knotty topic. But the major point I want you to make and I want me to make with you guys today is thinking about quotations. Now basically paraphrase, and paraphrasing is a great skill, unless the quotation matters. So paraphrase as a default, unless the form as much as the content of the research matters. So what I mean by that is if how the researcher is conveying their ideas is important, then that is when you start to use quotations rather than paraphrasing. And please make sure that they are written down accurately with inverted commas. The last thing you need is a confusion of a quotation with what you think is paraphrasing. That's when things get very dangerous for a PhD student. Now I know some disciplines tend to naturalize paraphrasing. It is a great skill. But if you can't paraphrase well, then for goodness sake, please use quotations until you learn the paraphrasing skill. And as I say, always work on paraphrasing. This is how you learn to paraphrase. You read the abstract, you take a breath, you put it away from you, and you write one sentence from that abstract. That's how you learn to paraphrase. Read an abstract, take a breath, write a sentence of what that abstract was saying. That is good paraphrasing. Nine, ensure your notes are sufficiently detailed so that you do not have to return to the original article or the original book. So the whole point of note taking is brevity. You must be succinct, be selective, but you do need to learn the delicate art of note taking whereby you must be detailed enough so that you don't have to waste time going back to the book or back to the article. And that of course leads us to 10. Ensure that your notes are sufficiently brief so that you haven't paraphrased the entire article. So it is important in note taking always err on the side of brevity if you can with some accurately transcribed quotations as well. Inexperienced or worried students tend to over paraphrase the article. Basically they rewrite the article for their notes. You do not have to do that. What I want you to do is be comfortable. I always say we learn to write by writing, we learn to take notes through note taking. So be comfortable and back yourself and be confident in your note taking skill. And really for me, note taking is the most important academic skill for undergraduates, for PhD students and for experienced researchers. My entire career is based on the caliber of the note taking that I do. My career would not have occurred if I didn't read widely and take good notes. That's how important this is. And it is a worry because it is becoming a neglected skill. A professor at Albion Christian University, Bill Rankin, wrote recently that, quote, about five years ago, my students stopped taking notes. I asked, why are you not taking notes? And they said, why would we take notes? I can go to Wikipedia or Google and get all the information I need. End of quote. The point of note taking is not to gain information alone. It improves memory, it triggers recall, it also enables us to shape our interpretations and provides a guide through our disciplines and disciplinary knowledge. PhD students and PhD research use a lot of different modes and methods. We use labs, we use field work, we use practice-led or creative-led methods, we also use unobtrusive research methods. But all these disciplinary perspectives and protocols are based on reading, finding a gap in knowledge which your PhD will fill. It is your reading 
that leads to your interpretation and your thinking. And at the moment, the phrase critical thinking is really overused, and I very rarely use it because I don't think it's a terribly functional phrase. But what I do know is critical thinking is based on critical reading. And passionate, powerful reading, writing, and thinking is the core to what creates a great PhD and a great PhD student. So this week, I wish you outstanding reading, and outstanding note taking. I wish you love, I wish you liked, I wish you peace. Tea out.